Hello, my name is Andrew Bruce Smith and I'm chair of the AI and PR panel for the Chartered Institute of Public Relations, the world's only chartered professional body for public relations practitioners with nearly 10,000 members. The CIPR uh, aims for the establishment of a chartered public relations profession serving clients and society with creative, technically expert and ethical practice. Our members act with uh, integrity uh, and according to the core values of the CIPR Code of Conduct. Uh, and these PR professionals sit at the heart of the organisations they serve as trusted, uh, respected and valued business leaders uh, and are accountable to their employers and the general public. It's therefore uh, no surprise uh, that AI uh, is already having an impact on all aspects of the PR and communications profession worldwide. Uh, and will continue to do so over the coming years. In this session, uh, I'd like to focus uh, on uh, three uh, core uh, areas. Uh, the ethical use of AI and PR practice, uh, the impact of AI on PR work itself, and the reputational uh, implications of uh, AI uh, use. Uh, let's take a look uh, at uh, ethics uh, first. I think it was Steve Jobs uh, who said that uh, computers don't make mistakes, uh, humans do. Uh, humans do get it wrong. Uh, we can forget to factor in something to our decision making. Uh, we can have uh, poor understanding or information uh, which leads to mistakes. Uh, but we can learn from those uh, types of mistakes. Machines can get it wrong because they rely on humans to get it right. Uh, they can be programs with uh, faulty or incomplete data, uh, work on the wrong code, or, or get things wrong because they are uh, dependent uh, on humans who are human. <laughs> uh, for example, uh, they introduce uh, unintentional uh, bias uh, or omit something uh, important. But ethics is not only about uh, avoiding mistakes, uh, it's about doing the right thing uh, for the right reasons uh, and being determined to cause no uh, deliberate harm. Let's take a look at the use of AI enabled tools uh, in public relations. Uh, we can see this is increasing. Uh, for public relations functions across any sector, AI can and is providing profiling data on stakeholders, uh, writing content, uh, improving risk detection and management, predicting media trends, uh, analyzing sentiment amongst diverse audiences and employees, uh, helping to mitigate against possible crises via predictive analytics, uh, assisting with evaluation, plus many, many other uh, applications which help organizations uh, and their workflows, uh, such as you know, running a, a public uh, relations uh, campaign. But if you look more specifically uh, at the use of uh, AI enabled tools uh, in, uh, in, in PR practice, uh, we can see uh, that there are a number of you know, uh, key considerations. Uh, again, for example, how uh, the data is powering an AI tool, how is it being uh, collected, uh, you know, from whom and from where, you know, how old uh, is that data, um, have we, we looked at the data privacy provisions, uh, how is the tool built, yeah, how is it tested, uh, including, you know, testing for, uh, for bias, uh, you know, what is the actual kind of AI uh, component uh, to it. You know, what, what is the, the, the impact going to be uh, on uh, human beings? You know, what, what are uh, the, potentially some of the unintended consequences? These are all questions we need to ask ourselves. Uh, you know, use and applications of, of AI tools. I mean, there's, there's potential for misuse of, of legitimate AI tools to, to misinform, to disinform. Uh, mistakes being amplified through misinformation, you know, disinformation where false information is being deliberately uh, spread. Yeah, another area is writing. You know, written communications is still a highly prized skill in public relations, and yet AI-assisted copywriting tools are about. You know, are we going to outsource uh, written communication to uh, an AI-powered uh, author? Uh, huge amounts of data about individuals are already being used to target them uh, in order to, uh, to persuade. Uh, it's even made more potent when you combine that, for example, with psychological uh, personality profiling. You know, the unethical, uh, emotion, unethical uh, emotional manipulation is possible to be tempting uh, for, to, to try to persuade others uh, to do this. And often you might be doing this without even realizing it. Um, and it's a reminder that the first guiding principle uh, is, is working in the public interest. You know, the, fact, it, it, the fact we should be causing no harm should be always top of mind uh, in any of the work that we do. Um, it, it's possible to streamline uh, uh, work processes and practices significantly using AI. In that case, PR is no different to any other. Um, but what are the consequences for human beings, both for the type of work uh, that they undertake, 
how they work with machines uh, and, the, and the impact that'll have on, on, on how many people are actually uh, uh, employed. You know, use of chatbots, uh, and personal assistants, and mobile and, and virtual agents. Uh, you know, chatbots, for example, have particular challenges. They're, they're the most human-like uh, of empowered uh, uh, agents. You know, they listen, you know, they talk to people uh, who reveal all kinds of information to them, which is you know, potentially permanently stored, uh, aggregated with other information, and used intelligently for further you know, conversations uh, to make their interactions uh, more human-like and personalized. Uh, but they're not neutral. Uh, they're there to assist, but also to, to gather data. You know, this applies to voice and text-based uh, bot applications. Uh, there's potential for bias because they collect data only from those people they interact with. They're not sensitive, for example, to other issues around, say, diversity, uh, because the way the algorithms work uh, and perhaps potentially further marginalized minority voices, or they can be supplied with uh, or generate incorrect information and have no powers of discernment to identify this. Uh, PR professionals clearly need to, uh, to keep this in mind. Uh, we need an ethical framework uh, to work out uh, what is the right thing uh, to do. Uh, the law uh, may not uh, keep pace with technology, but in the AI space, uh, I, I do believe new regulation is not enough. Uh, we do need an ethical framework to work out what is the right thing to do. Uh, this usually requires specific training in AI ethics. You know, the first thing to determine is whether a particular tool uh, is, that's being used is AI enabled. You know, it's a quick answer to find out you know, if it has an algorithm at its core, you know, whether it can learn as it is used, uh, how do we go about considering the ethical implications of the use of a particular tool? It's been so many times that with great power comes great responsibility uh, and the power of AI makes it exciting or scary, uh, depending on your, your point of view. Uh, it is growing fast in some sectors of the economy, um, or potentially not so much in, in, in PR, but we, we, we do need to keep an eye on how AI is designed, uh, built, uh, used, uh, and ask questions to ensure uh, that it provides uh, benefits for, for everyone uh, with a clear edge to working in the public interest uh, above all. The disruption uh, related to COVID-19 has, has clearly created uh, a you know, reinvention at scale uh, with AI and automation tools taking a front seat uh, in, in many sectors. It's why the AI and PR panel uh, has been encouraging uh, PR professionals to, to upskill in the area of AI. Uh, there are many automation and AI tools available to PR professionals, but uh, I suspect the take-up is, is at the low end of the scale. It's, it's also possible that, that PR professionals are currently using AI tools uh, without uh, knowing it. Clearly, AI can be a force for good, uh, but it's also fraught with dangers. Uh, just because something can be done doesn't mean uh, that uh, it should be done. Uh, and that's the essence of ethical decision making, uh, making thoughtful and thought through uh, choices. Uh, the test of a well reflected ethical decision is, is one that has survived scrutiny, you know, uh, challenges uh, uh, thought, intent, uh, and execution. So we should all be prepared to ask ourselves questions before arriving at our decisions. Getting ethics right and doing the right thing is hard enough in normal life. You know, we add in AI and machine learning. Uh, and you have a recipe for decision making fraught with perils, uh, one that requires the mind, uh, human minds, uh, to focus on ethics at, at every turn of activity, because every mistake uh, we make will be amplified uh, in uh, big data and the algorithmic universe uh, in which we now uh, live. We only have to think of insurance companies basing decisions on an algorithm, you know, banks approving loans with an AI tool. Uh, or, you know, closer to all of us in the throes of a, of a still throes of a pandemic, uh, healthcare decisions assisted by an algorithm that could be poorly designed uh, 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 and, and realize the impact and the potential impact this has on individuals and society at large. Um, as PR professionals, uh, we, we mustn't make any decisions which kind of ultimately may cause harm uh, or remove other people's ability to make informed choices uh, or to put anyone at disadvantage or, or show bias, uh, even if unintended. Uh, it's not just about the quality of the data, uh, it's the ethical factors that we build into our uh, decision making. Uh, PR professionals uh, offer strategic advice uh, to colleagues and colleagues and senior leaders, and we have a professional responsibility to society uh, and our own organisations to help them make good decisions. It's the ethical uh, guardian uh, role. 
uh, decisions about how our organizations use AI will have reputational and relational impacts that go far beyond uh, our use of AI enabled tools. The context in which and for which they are used are therefore of critical uh, importance. Uh, AI will radically change the way we live uh, and work. You know, those who are able to use uh, and take advantage of and engage with AI will uh, benefit. Uh, those who are unable to do so for whatever reason will become disenfranchised. This means that organizations and individuals who have the resources and knowledge to capture leadership in the AI space uh, will be the new elite, uh, having the leading edge and hold uh, significant power. This includes not just the big tech companies, but potentially governments, NGOs, large corporations, and traditional media uh, who have adopted AI, uh, as well as non-traditional media organizations. Big questions arise uh, over the governance uh, of these uh, developments. In short, decisions about how our organizations uh, use AI you know, are clearly going to have uh, reputational uh, and uh, relational impacts. Uh, AI uh, isn't going away, uh, and uh, we, we have to kind of, uh, knuckle under to uh, 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 um, uh, uh, make sure that we're, we're, we're using uh, ethical decision-making frameworks in, in, uh, in all of our approaches. Thank you uh, so much uh, for your time. Uh, I hope you've uh, found this presentation uh, of, of relevance and uh, interest to you. Thank you so much.